13. Herefore should we not be in heaviness. Thy touch hath still its ancient power, thy loving touch that healeth all. And yet we wait from hour to hour, nor see thee come by even fall. We bow before thy Calvary, the twilight hour shall find us dumb, and unoffended, Lord, in thee it will be clear when thou dost come. But sometimes it cometh to our mind that we have prayed long time, and yet we think to ourselves that we have not our asking. But herefore should we not be in heaviness, for I am sure by our Lord's signifying that either we abide a better time, or more grace or a better gift. So Julian of Norwich again. One of the better gifts is the sweetness of our daily manna, which, when we can only gather a very little, a mere handful, is somehow caused to suffice so that we have no lack. A single thought of love opens out, like a bud opening into flower before our eyes, as indeed the large violet passion flower of South India does, between nine and ten every morning, whether growing or in a bowl by one's bedside, and a wonderful thing it is to see. Another of the better gifts is the power which is all divine, not in the least of us, to acquiesce with true inward peace in that which our Lord allows to be, so that it is not an effort to be happy, we are happy, and our prayer is this, Thy will be my will, and may my will ever follow thy will, and accord to it in all wise. Be there to me one willing and one not willing with thee, and let me not will nor nil, but what thou wilt or wilt not. Nothing is farther from our thoughts than the dreary words, submission, resignation. To stay there would be dismal indeed, and, Lord, with a song, let my will run all the day long with thy will. That is life as we wish to live it. But I do not find that this position that of unbroken peacefulness and inward song is one which we can hope to hold unassailed. It is no soft arrangement of pillows, no easy chair. It is a fort in an enemy's country, and the foe is wise in assault and especially in surprise. And yet there can be nothing to fear, for it is not a place that we must keep, but a stronghold in which we are kept if only, in the moment we are conscious of attack, we look away unto our faith's princely leader and perfecter, Jesus, who endured, Rotherham's rendering of Hebrews 12.2. He who endured can protect and maintain that of which he is author and finisher. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This peace, no lesser, no other, is proof against the sharp stab of longing to be well again, and the fiery dart of the knowledge of burden laid on others, and this is, I think, the fieriest dart of all. The peace of God can keep us steady in the place where we most desire to dwell, so that we shall not shadow the lives of those who love us. If, in the paths of the world, stones might have wounded thy feet, toil or dejection have tried thy spirit, of that we saw nothing. Of that we saw nothing. How good if, by his blessed enabling, we should daily so receive his peace that others should see nothing of stone, thorn, toil, dejection, but find, when they come, only the gift of a great contentment, the restful peace of God.